Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you might uh, be at the moment. This presentation, we will go into some detail about online um, PD and underground cables. We'll go into a little bit of information on how, why it occurs, how we detect it, and then some methods for online PD location as well. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, begin. So straight into the deep end then on what is partial discharge. And many of you may be familiar with partial discharge in other types of electrical assets, um, in other types of um, assets in, in one's network. Um, and with cable PD is exactly the same. Partial discharge is an electrical discharge that doesn't completely bridge the space between two conducting electrodes. Specifically what that means and, and, the, and the definition of a, of a partial discharge is that if you've got a piece of um, insulation between two conducting electrodes, so typically the core of a cable and the earth sheath of a cable, it means that the discharge is not occurring completely across the space. It's not completely uh, bridging that gap between the core and the earth. It's occurring at a point within that insulation. So at a point where there may be a defect, where there may be a flaw, the PD is occurring uh, very specifically at that localized uh, point of the defect. It can occur from the core and the earth, or it can occur between the cores or between the phases in, um, in a network. Basically, anywhere where there is insulation that may be compromised or that may have a defect, a PD can occur. If that insulation is solid, it can occur in a gas-filled void. So maybe there's been a manufacturing defect, or maybe uh, during a joint termination, there's a small gas-filled void. Um, that's not completely been sealed. They could, you could get a partial discharge occurring there. If we're talking about oil insulation or, or, or compound insulation, um, you could get bubbles occurring. Or if it's around an electrode in air, so maybe a cable termination, you can get um, you can get um, a PD occurring there. Um, it's known as surface tracking, or um, obviously if it's up on on a bushing on an outside connection, it can also be known as corona, which is less concerning. So in um, cables, and, and actually, I should have added another uh, picture here, but in cables, uh, the main places you're going to find a defect is going to be in the joints and the accessories. You can get PD occurring in the pure cable insulation, and it's much more common to see in older network types. So when you've got oil and paper cables, um, it's much more common to see partial discharge activity in the pure cable insulation. Um, like on the image below, that's a paper cable that failed. Um, but much more common, especially in modern networks now, where we're using XLPE cable, we're using polymer-based uh, cables, the joints and the accessories, the man-made bits, if you like, the bits that um, an engineer would terminate on site, that is where we're going to find the defects, because that is the weakest point in any system. Modern manufacturing techniques now means the quality of, of pure cables are very, very high, and indeed they go through stringent tests on, on um, production and stringent tests on commissioning as well, which means any defects would likely have been spotted at the time of um, production or the time of first installation. So the weakest points are going to be the cable joints, um, as you guys are probably uh, very familiar with. So the, the majority of failures will be found inside cable joints in, in the pure cables. And the bit that I should have included in here as well is terminations as well, of course. Now, we often refer to termination PD as switchgear PD because it is inside the switchgear, but of course, it's still part of your cable network. And so PD inside cable terminations is, is still a very, um, a, a very you know, common place to find PD in, your, in, in the whole cable network, if you like. So joints, accessories, terminations, that's where we, we're looking to find uh, partial discharge activity. Now, the next few slides go through the mathematics of, of, of why a PD occurs, but um, I tend to always uh, avoid this, uh, mainly to keep you all awake, um, because otherwise it gets quite deep. But what, what I'm really going to do is I'm just going to highlight sort of the high level reasons why um, PD um, exists, why PD occurs. So this picture on the left is sort of your ideal case. It's, it's your perfect cable with a, with a small gas filled void, a small defect inside the, inside the cable. Now, normally what you get is an even um, dissipation of electrical stress. So from the core of a cable to the, to the outer sheath, to the earth sheath, you get an even dissipation of electrical stress. Um, however, when you have a, a small gas filled void or a small defect, the problem, the reason PD occurs is, is because you've got that, um, You've got that change in electrical characteristics, basically. You've got that change. You've got you've introduced um, essentially here. You've introduced another point of um, potential electrical stress, okay, in your insulation. 
So what that means is during normal um, working conditions, during normal operation, you will get an inc a localized stress at the specific defect, a localized stress at the specific um, cavity or gas filled void, if we're looking at this pure insulation in this example. Um, you get a localized electrical stress. So as the energy in the power cycle increases, this small cavity, this small defect area um, doesn't have the um, doesn't have the ability to, re to resist that. And basically you will get a very small partial discharge occurring at this uh, defect point. So like I said, a partial discharge is occurring at the actual uh, cavity, at the defect. So it's not occurring across the whole insulation. It's a very localized um, discharge. It's a localized um, stress point. So I'm not going to go through the mathematics. Uh, practical case study, then practical uh, example um, using the the, the mass, the, the formula. If we've got a if we've got a polyurethane um, insulation, 20 millimeters, um, the breakdown strength of polyurethane is 10 kV per millimeter. So you can imagine over 20 millimeters, 200 kV would be the um, insulation uh, capability of of this of this uh, particular uh, cable. By introducing this small cavity, say, uh, say it's a one millimeter uh, void, um, introducing this, this cavity, what it means is as the energy in the power cycle increases, the stress across this cavity increases. And according to this formula, the breakdown would be at 17.25 kV. So, of course, that is well within the um, operating voltage of an insulation of this thickness. That's well within uh, the operating voltage of this cable circuit. So what it means is during normal operation, partial discharges will be occurring um, at this local point. And again, just to stress, the PD is occurring inside this cavity here. As the energy in the power cycle increases, the stress increases across this specific defect, across this specific cavity, and a partial discharge occurs. If we imagine, um, if we imagine this line across here, is that 17.25 kV uh, for our example. Uh, what we've got here is we've got the power cycle, we've got your, your, your sine, sine wave, you've got your, um, so as the energy of the power cycle increases, as this voltage increases, it reaches that point whereby that cavity can no longer withstand um, the stress and we get a small discharge occurring. The energy in the power cycle is still increasing. So again, we get a recharge across that cavity, as an increase in stress again across that cavity and we get a discharge occurring. So what we find, what phenomenon we find in partial discharge is that as the energy in the power cycle increases, both on the positive side and also the negative side of the power cycle, we get these partial discharges occurring along with it. So typically what we see um, on the right hand side here, what we call PRPD, phase resolved partial discharges. And PRPD is a, a very common method um, for users and, and people who are using partial discharge equipment to decide if something might be PD or might be background noise. And so what you see, what we see is these very typical patterns. So this is an animated GIF from our monitoring system and each, each bar is a highlighted point of potential partial discharge and a background noise uh, behind it. As the energy in the power cycle increases, partial discharge is occurring. Um, then the energy is crossing the zero point here increasing on the negative side and partial discharges occurring. So we get these typical, what we call uh, PRPDs, phase resolved partial discharge patterns, and these typical 180 degree uh, shifts in the PD activity. We can see across there. Now you'll also see each one of these um, bars, if you like, each one of these are at different uh, values and the Y axis in our case is energy. Um, and that's because every time a partial discharge occurs, they're not uniform like this, perfect diagram on the left hand side. Every time a partial discharge occurs, it will change the, um, the defect point, it will change that cavity. Um, and so it means that the next PD might take a little bit longer before it occurs, or it might require a bit more energy um, before it occurs. So we can get this sort of variation of, of um, PD activity. Um, the one on the bottom here then is um, the same thing essentially. Um, this is a, a, again a PRPD, uh, sometimes known as a, a, a phi QN graph. It's got a it's got a depth to it, so you can see the different colours. Basically, what that's doing is um, it's a persistence graph. So we've taken a shot of PD in the power cycle, we've taken another PD in the power cycle, and we've put them on top of each other, so that over time we can build up a pattern. And this again is another common function of um, 
measuring PD. Quite often, PD may only occur um, one, two, 10, 15 times per power cycle, and there may not be enough information to decide if something is PD or is, or is noise. And so synchronizing your measurement device to the power cycle and being able to record uh, multiple power sec uh, multiple segments, multiple um, power cycles, and putting them on top of each other um, becomes quite an effective way to build up that pattern and see if something is typical PD pattern. Of course, in this case, it's a very noisy PD. I think this is from our monitoring system, and it's recorded over you know a, a two or three week um, period, so it's, it's a very busy graph. There is differences as well between cable and switchgear PD. So if you are familiar with um, PRPD patterns on switchgear, um, you will find that there is there is definite differences. Um, depending on the defect point, you can get differences in, in PD patterns and also depending on the, um, the type of asset. What's typical to find in underground cables, for example, is that you may find that there's more PDs per power cycle than you would find on switchgear. So it's quite common in an underground cable system to find more discharges per power cycle than you would find in, um, in a switchgear where you may only get uh, quite, I mean, quite often is, is less than 10, you know, maybe two or three pulses per power cycle. On a cable, you might find many. I mean, you can see here each one of these single power cycles very busy. This is a typical pattern from an oil filled cable of which in London, where we do a lot of monitoring, um, there is a lot of oil cables um, still with, with partial discharge activity. OK, so the main takeaways from here, then PD occurs um, locally at the defect point. And the PD pattern in the power cycle is critical um, to aid users in differentiating PD uh, from noise. It, it, you know, PD has a typical pattern. So what are the effects of PD? I mean, I think the next few slides should be quite obvious, but uh, to go into the detail about them, the PDs themselves are very low in energy. So we measure, we measure them in the picocoulomb range. So very, very low in energy. Picocoulomb, of course, 10 to the minus 12. Um, however, they're very localized. Um, so at that, like I said, at that specific defect point, very localized, and they're also very repetitive. So what you'll find is there'll be a combination of mechanical, thermal, and chemical damage to localized at that uh, specific de defect point. So over time, PDs are occurring in every power cycle. So over time, you will get this um, damage effect uh, caused at the local uh, the local defect point. So over time, it'll get worse and worse and worse until eventually, of course, it will lead to a catastrophic failure. Now, just a note on PD occurring in every power cycle, like I just alluded to, it is true that PD does occur in every power cycle. So from one cycle to another, there will be very little difference in the PD activity. Um, however, PD will vary depending on the load um, and PD can vary depending on the, um, the temperature and the humidity. So depending on where your defect is, um, and depending on um, the load throughout the day, the temperature throughout the day, and maybe even the temperature throughout the year, the winter and the summer months, you can get a variation of PD activity. So you can get seasonal patterns and you can get daily patterns of PD that um, related to, to load. Okay, so if you imagine a PD, and of course this is a typical electrical tree on the left-hand side here, and that's exactly what will happen in a solid insulation. Um, if you've got the, a, a defect over time, you'll get this sort of electrical tree forming, um, and eventually that will lead to a failure of inside your solid insulation. If you've got PD occurring on the outside of, um, so actually this bottom image is, an, again, it's an oil cable, um, so PD occurring in the, in the pure cable. Um, you can get this sort of carbonization effect um, inside as well. So this was, I think we the stripped back a couple of layers. I think this was in Chatham in, in Kent. Uh, stripped back a, a few layers and we can see that sort of carbonization. So we can see where the PD was occurring um, before the cable was repaired, before this was uh, extracted. On terminations, um, in the same way as on um, insulation inside switchgear like this, on terminations, you can get PD occurring, for, of course, from contaminated insulation. Um, and so you might find this surface tracking activity, this carbonization evidence, again, on the outside of, of, of um, termination components. OK, so the cable failure affects many of you online here will we'll, we'll, we'll manage cable networks. We'll, um, so you guys will be much more familiar with the effects than, than me. And you'll know specifically the, the effects on your local network, whether that local network is a private network, maybe a, a production manufacturing plant, uh, maybe running critical infrastructure like underground networks, 
um, maybe you're running large utility networks. So the different effects um, of a cable failure will affect you all in different ways, but loss of supply, of course, unplanned outage, increased customer interruptions and customer minutes lost. This is, of course, a, a UK measurement for, for uh, failures. Um, but each country around the world has a similar measurement on the utility side of things. If you're running a private network, of course, the biggest problem is uh, downtime of production facilities, downtime of manufacturing facilities and the financial loss of that. And then, of course, the failure point must be found and repaired, um, which is what these gentlemen are doing um, there. I say it's what they're doing. It could well be a, a, um, an oil uh, a water pipe as well. But let's pretend it's an underground cable that they're repairing. Um, thank you very much. Uh, for your time. Hope you learned something and watch out for new um, information that we'll be sending through. Thank you.